Calligraphy is all around you in your daily life. From neon signs to your TV screen, the art of calligraphy encompasses us in subtle ways. The objective is not only to look at history. With the help of three experienced calligraphers, look at the current and future potential of this unique art form. Today, computer programs allow for a variety of resourceful uses in calligraphy. The software provides us with the latest fonts and type styles, all of which have their roots in calligraphy. What we know today as fonts are really forms of calligraphy designs. When you sit at the computer and use your word processing or design program, the fonts you scroll through may have many different names, each one providing a unique look and style. Uncial, Copperplate, Gothic, Chancery, and Roman. The Roman capitals are still prevalent in today's society. Understanding these fonts and names will tell you what style to expect when searching for a font. Where did these type styles originate and how did the art of the written word develop? The earliest forms of our written language can be traced back to the Egyptians, whose scribes used the leaves of the papyrus plant to make a form of paper. Our word for paper comes from this Egyptian word, papyrus. The history of calligraphy in the Western world starts in Egypt. However, it should be noted that the Chinese, at the same time, were creating their own written language. The European and Chinese calligraphy developed independently of each other. In the 8th century, the Greeks acquired their alphabet from the Phoenicians and adapted it for their own use. The Greeks made several contributions to calligraphy. The English word calligraphy is derived from two Greek words, kalos, meaning beautiful, and graphos, meaning writing. The Greek's beautiful writing is preserved in marble and bronze. However, the Latin alphabet, with 23 letters, which is very close to what we see today, was developed in the first century BC. The remaining three letters were added later. It was the Romans who had the biggest impact on how we view writing today. Many of today's signs and stately monuments are derived from these very early Roman scripts. Very little has changed from the writing style seen in the stone inscriptions carved onto the Roman columns in AD 114. Rustica is another script that gained popularity for its ease of use in the 4th century and lasted until the 6th century. Beautiful examples of this script are seen on maps created during this time period. Once Christianity became the official religion of Rome, there was an explosion outwards, not just of the new religion, but also of the allied cultures, including writing. Foremost among the areas to fall under the influence of the new culture was Ireland. The Irish developed their own hand of anchels, the half anchel. The Irish monks wrote the Book of Kells, a beautiful treasure of illuminated calligraphy. The Book of Kells has inspired calligraphers around the world. All the colors were natural dyes and are just as brilliant as they were when they were done. And pure gold was used for the decorations. So it's a magnificent piece. The Book of Kells has had a colorful history. It was stolen in 1006 and recovered in a bog a short time later, minus its cover. The beautiful inlaid jewels and gold that decorated the cover were missing. After the fall of the Roman Empire, new styles and forms of calligraphy evolved. Around 750 AD in France, during the reign of Charlemagne, a more legible and smaller letter that used less parchment was developed. The Carolingian script brought about the introduction of a genuine minuscule hand. It was the first to use both upper and lower case letters. Carolingian was popular in much of Europe and used during the 9th through 11th centuries. In the 13th century, the Gothic style became popular not only in architecture but in calligraphy as well. 
The French noble and art patron, Jean de Berry, commissioned several devotional prayer books. The most famous of the books of hours are Les Grandes Hours and Les Très Richet Hours. The Flemish Limborg brothers completed Les Très Richet Hours in 1416, a masterpiece of illuminated lettering. Paper had been developed in China between 400 B.C. and 100 A.D. The process evolved from making paper of silk to using wood. It wasn't until trade routes to China were established by Marco Polo that the Asian influence appeared in the West. It was the Chinese who first introduced the West to paper. The wide use of paper in Europe began in the 14th century. Prior to this time, scrolls were used until books increased in popularity. Monks would copy books made from vellum and parchment, page by page. The introduction of printing by movable type in the 15th century put many scribes out of business. Designing decorative letters, writing legal documents, and teaching kept some calligraphers busy. The invention of the printing press forever changed the artistic direction the calligrapher would take. The decline of calligraphy continued and lasted right through the 19th century. Elizabeth Wilson, a calligraphy teacher and artist, has seen firsthand the influences that technology can have. Her career has spanned over five decades. That was a very dramatic event for calligraphers when Gutenberg invented the printing press around 1450. And it put a lot of calligraphers out of business, I'm sure. They must have been aghast, just like we were when the computer took over on all the certificates that I used to do for all the major companies in San Diego. And one by one, they dropped by the wayside because a computer would take over. And I'm sure the calligraphers during that time felt the same. But they could still always do something. They still did the initials, they still did captions, they still did decorations. A printing press can never replace the handwork. Calligraphers over the years worked to create alphabets that were easier to write. In Rome, the Vatican, through its papal correspondence, created the Chancery script. Thus, the Chanceries were born. They were secretaries in business and law offices. Some notable Vatican chanceries were Arrighi and Palatino. Ludovico Arrighi's book Aparina, published in 1522, is still considered the best instruction book for learning the chancery script. Next, a look at the various tools of the calligrapher.